start again. <laughs> okay, so who are you? Uh, my name is Miguel Mesa Posada. And what are you doing in Paris? I'm studying anthropology, a master's. And how did you go from fashion to anthropology? Well, I did an, you could say, internship or like, uh, some, I spent some time with a community of weavers in Oaxaca, in Mexico, and I lived and I worked with them for three months, from three to four months, and I was really obsessed uh, around the way they were dressing, and I thought I had some ideas on how to teach them to, to sell better or to innovate their work, but at the end they, they taught me that that's something deeper, than something that goes beyond the choice of color or the choice of change. And I was like obsessed with that idea and, and the way they, they dressed. So I fell in love with that and I, I realized that there's something beyond fashion in the way that choosing only the colors and creating a statement for six months. And some people have statements that they use and, and reinvent for their whole life. So that's what really was inspiring for me. And you're going back there, you said? Yes, I'm going back uh, next year uh, for five months, hopefully. And what are you going to do in those five months? Well, I I will now have uh, like anthropologic, ethnographical knowledge before to to do the the field work as it is meant to be. So I will be not just like intuitive in the way I interact with people, but I would have the background of how to do it the correct way and how to really take the the whole advantage of the experience. And when did you start doing your own collection? I started in 2013 when I started studying fashion and for each year I did like a collection like big enough to be considered a collection not only as academic process but and how did I ever get to see it you met it via um, Liliana Sanguino which uh, she was showcasing something in London called a uh, part of the International Fashion Showcase and it was Liliana who knew you and who uh, found out about me because she, she was asked to do a curator of Colombian people and she immediately uh, told me you have to send this to Diane she has to know you <laughs> and I love the work and you were telling me like you made your own fabrics see because in Colombia, the textile industry is, is there is no textile industry beyond plain cotton. So what I could find uh, in the market was really, really sad, and I was so, so depressing. I said to myself, like, I have to do to it my own. So even though it was, it was it wasn't easy, but I really enjoyed the process of making the fabrics, and that's why also I went to Mexico to Oaxaca to see how they made the fabrics, and I was uh, obsessed with also the origin of the traditional evolution of, of, of fabrics that it started very very rigid as you say like it's culture it's cultural but I think that with time uh, it would evolve also in my way of conceiving the, or construct, of co constructing the dresses or the clothes the dress in, in, in the body and what's your dream for the future that's well, very cliche I know. <laughs> but, you know, my dream is to be able to 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 manage to do the fashion because I love to create, but also to be able to have a relationship with intellect, intellectual relationship or intellectual production as well with the same power as the way I do fashion. I'm really obsessed now with anthropology and has opened me a lot, a lot of windows to to look up. And I think fashion, if it looks up to those places, not to do like obvious uh, appropriation. I think what you can learn goes beyond the simple uh, copying the, the motifs. For me, it makes no sense, but I think there's something deeper that, that I, my gen myself and the generation I belong to, if we really look for it, could be very beneficial for living communities. Because that's a big topic now. That was just at Voices about appropriation. What do you think about what's happening right now with all these people just taking things? I think that you must... you and must different cultures from also. See, I mean, there's a lot of people saying that, no, uh, why are you taking that that doesn't belong to you? And then you start talking about genetics and like the problem, that's not the problem. It doesn't matter how, how the percentage of, of what I'm made of. If you ask me, like, I could have 
my family. So make sure Colombian, you, you can don't know where you're from, so you can say you can take from all the places because you're made up of different races, different. That makes no sense. Also, it's 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 sad that communities that get copied do do not receive normally uh, like recognitions for that. But I I feel appropriation is something so human because you really find yourself when you look at the other. So that kind of of knowing what you are, knowing what if you look something for, for me the easiest way to see it when you see something you like you take it. If I like your the way you put your hat, I will put the hat that way. If you like your perfume, I will ask you and I will use it. I, I really, I, f I think that you could see, you could live it in a, the most natural, transparent way. But when, I don't know why people is so obsessed with that, it's been going on since ages. But apparently now it's like trendy or, or more direct, I don't know. But for me, I see it very fluid. Great, thank you.